Hey, what's up guys? This is the Latin Assassin. I'm gonna make a quick little video as to how to set your brakes on your bait caster. So I fished the Sealy's Big Bass Splash this weekend. Uh, I happened to cash a check. Nothing to write home to mom about, but I cashed a check. And I was with my homie 207, and he noticed that his um, bait caster, he wasn't able to cast as far as he thought he should. So we initially thought that it was his line building up memory because it had been on there for a while. So we took the line off um, and we noticed that he still couldn't cast as far as he should have. I was going to question his arm strength, but I didn't want to go there. So what, we, what I did, I asked him, hey man, uh, how do you have your brakes set up? And then he asked me, brakes? What are you talking about? What do you mean brakes? So I showed him a little quick on the water tutorial how to set his brakes. And that's basically what I'm going to show you here. Right here, we have a Revo STX, which is a higher end Abu Garcia reel. In the middle, we have a Bass Pro Shop higher end uh, bait casting reel. And on the right, we have a Abu Garcia Revo S, which is a middle to lower end reel. And the only reason I have these here is so that I can show you the difference um, in brake systems. So we'll just go through that real quick and hopefully this will help you not eliminate but uh, lessen the amount of bird's nest that you get, but maximize your casting distance. All right guys, so here we have our Revo STX and we'll start off with the STX. This is again, Revo's or Abu Garcia's higher end reel. So in order to access, here you have your, well, let's start off with a magnetic brake. So the magnetic brake is here. This is your min, that's your max. Now it's an older reel, so they got scratched off. But if you are barely starting off bait cast, with a bait caster, you want to put this closer to max. Right now mine is at the uh, min, but that's because I've done this for a while. So in order to access the second set of brakes, you need to unscrew this screw right here. You just basically unscrew it. And once it's unscrewed, you pop that out and you're able to push this up. Now when you push that up, it'll give you access to the other part of the brake system. So in here, you see the mechanical brakes. Now these mechanical brakes uh, work by um, physics, of course, but this is not a nerd channel, this is a fishing channel, so we'll just stay focused on the fishing. So simple terms, if you pop them out, as in pull them down, then that's gonna help you slow down the reel. If you push them in, then they'll lock in and not spin out when you're, when the spool is um, letting out line. So then it won't help slow down the reel or the spool. So it's gonna be hard to know whether you have it clicked in or out. The only way to know is to hear that click. Now, if you have it free floating like this, where you can just flick the spring, then you know that you're in the on position. And if you set a break here, then you want to set a break on the opposite side so you make sure that you have a good smooth spin because if you don't have symmetrical um, brakes applied then you could have a little uh like a a portion of the of the spool that just speeds up momentarily and then slows down and that might even cause more bird's nest so once you'd have that you pop those to your heart's content now you place back the magnetic spool or actually or magnetic brake actually let me show you this magnetic brake so these are magnets when you change this from min and get it closer to max that pushes out these magnets these magnets will get closer to the spool which is causing it to slow down um, a lot more than it than it would if you had it at min so i'm not sure if you can see this but i'll just put them to max and potentially you'll be able to see the magnets get closer. So now you can see a little lip right here, and that lip shows you that the magnets got closer to the surface, essentially closer to the spool itself. So I'm gonna put them back to min, cause that's where I like to have them. And then all we're gonna do is place this back uh, the right way, not backwards. We're gonna place this back. And when we place it back, we're gonna tighten this screw again, and then we should be good. So that's the way that you do magnetic and mechanical braking in your reel. Now that's the same on the Bass Pro Shop reel. But what I do like about this one is you don't have to unscrew it. 
all you have to do is pop this little puppy out. There's no screw unscrewing at all. And then you can move this. So you re remove the faceplate. Same concept here. You see the brakes on one side and you see the mechanical brakes on the inside. So once again, you just put the brakes to whatever you feel suits your capabilities and set them up accordingly. Now on the lower end uh, STX, I mean Revo SX, you'll notice that you don't have the magnetic piece. Now this is 207's reel. He broke this piece off trying to open this up rather than waiting for me to tell him how to take it off. So uh, you unscrew this and then you pull this out and now you have access to here and you'll see that all you have are the mechanical brakes. So that's essentially what you're paying for and, and bearings and things like that um, when you get the higher end. You're paying for the magnet, magnetic brakes and more bearings. So we'll put this one back. We'll give credit to 207 because we borrowed his reel. What the, we'll attempt to put it back. Okay, the other thing you might get is a better, a better, uh, a smoother return. What the, there we go. A little technical difficulties, but we're good. So the third brake that I'm going to show you is, I don't know exactly what to call this, but it's basically a tension brake, not a tension brake, like quit listening to me, but it creates some kind of tension so that the spool doesn't come out as fast. And I'll show you exactly what I mean um, as, as I show you what it's for. Basically what you want to do is loosen this according to the lure that you're using, the weight of the lure. So if the lure is heavy, you want this a little bit tighter. If the lure is lighter, you want to loosen this so that more line goes out um, when you cast. If you have this loose when you cast a heavy lure, then that will cause a lot of line to, or the spool to basically take off real fast. And if the wind or anything slows down your bait, that spool does not slow down. Now, if you have a uh, lighter bait and you have this really tight, then it's going to make it extremely hard for you to cast that bait. So when you have a lighter bait, you loosen this. When you have a heavier bait, you tighten it. And I'll show you with a close-up of what it should look like, the way to test out how tight this brake is and um, how, it sh how tight it should be. All right, in order to set what I refer to as the tension brake, that little circle on the side of the reel, what you want to do is you want to have your rod at about a 45 and see how fast your bait falls to the ground. If it falls fast, then you want to tighten that tension brake. If it falls too slow, then you want to loosen it. Find somewhere in the middle that you're comfortable with that'll give you uh, good casting ability, but not, a, not as many bird's nests. So we'll see how fast this one is set. So you see that one fell pretty fast. So you probably don't want it at that speed, but I've been casting for a long time, so I'm able to uh, test the limits. So now we'll just tighten it up a little bit and we'll see how fast it goes. See, it slowly goes down. That's a little too tight. So I'll loosen it a little bit. And that that's a little too fast. That's a decent speed right there. So whatever you're comfortable with, play with the tension that's applied, loosen it, tighten it, whatever you feel works best for you. Now what I wanna go through is how to actually slow down your reel with your thumb. This is the next part of bait casting, right? So some people slow down the spool by keeping their finger on the line. I tend to not do that because it'll start balling up the line over here 
almost uh, loosening it to cause another bird's nest. So what I do is I place the edge of my thumb either inside or outside and I, I let it rest right on the spool. The side of the spool, as you can see, there's a little bit left. I mean, even if I had more line, I would still put pressure over here or over here as opposed to placing it directly on the line as I'm slowing it down. Because as I'm slowing it down, if the line starts to back up, I'm forcing it to back up even more and potentially uh, starting a bird's nest. So what I want to do is I want to keep it here and then it just if it goes down, I slow it down on the side, not on the actual spool itself. I'm using this. I mean, not on the line itself. I'm using the side of the reel, the side of the spool to slow it down. Not touching the line at all. So that's how I prefer to do it. But I do know that a lot of people uh, prefer to keep their finger on the line and stop it that way. Now, if uh, things were going crazy, then I may just stop it with my thumb right here on the line. But if everything's going right, then I just slow it down here on the side, just the, basically the metal part of the spool and slow it down that way. Remember, tightening the tension brake right here allows your bait to fall slower and loosening it allows your bait to fall faster. And you need to change that every time you change the weight of your lure in order for you to lessen the amount of bird's nest that you get. So if you set your brakes, you should lessen, not eliminate the amount of bird's nest that you get. So hopefully this gives you more time on the water fishing and not messing with the bird's nest that are bound to happen, but hopefully this way a lot less. Peace.